tutorial I just want to have a very quick look at the corner pin effect because you'll see in this particular piece of footage the tripod's locked off and we've got a sign that's actually at a perspective and say we want to replace this sign we can actually do it with a particular tool or an effect called the corner pin effect now we will be doing a whole section on effects a bit later on but while we're talking about motion and we're talking about animating things I want to also demonstrate how you can kind of lock these together to get the best result so where do I find it it's actually in my titles bin so control double click or command double click on the Mac to get to titles bin and there's my danger sign you can see it's a highly complex sign I can take that and I can drop it on the clip above and I'm going to trim it out so it's the same length as the clip and now I'm ready to try and make it fit however if I select the sign and I actually go to my effects controls and I open up motion and I start to try and scale it to fit and move it around it's not going to work and if I then say open up the motion controls and uncheck uniform scale to see if I can well sort of make it fit in a different way you'll see that clearly no matter how I do it I'm not really going to be able to get this item to fit simply because it's at a perspective so I'm going to reset my fixed effects and take it back to its full size and I'm going to apply the corner pin effect now it's found under the effects tab here we've got all the presets we've looked at before we don't want presets but we do want the corner pin effect now if you don't know where an effect is you have this wonderful search dialog box just here and if you click in the search dialog box and start typing corner by the time you've got to the N of corner you'll find that you've got video effects distort corner pin and this is the one we want to apply now to apply it my piece of text is actually selected I could simply just drag and drop it on here or the even simpler way in CS6 is just double click and when I double click the corner pin effect is applied now initially it looks like you have to drag corners around with this hot text which isn't exactly the way that I'd want to do it I'm just going to reset that but notice it's got this little icon here which again is telling us that if you click on it you're going to get access to these points actually up here in the program monitor so I've clicked on it and I've got four little targets for the four points that I'm going to move around and I can click and drag these targets into place so I can put it over that corner and I can put it over that corner and I can put it over this corner here and I can put it over the last corner now if I'm not 100% sure that I've got that right what I might want to do is zoom in my viewer and you'll notice we've got a little button here that says fit and I can actually say well go into 100% and then I've got scroll bars to scroll around to see how close they are and once I've scrolled around I can make sure that it's as close as possible to how I want it to be by using the scroll bars you can see I was out on that corner and this one is kind of okay and then once I'm done I can take this magnifying box and take it back to fit and there is my footage fitted click away and there's my danger sign actually on my footage that looks great I've got the perspective perfectly by using the corner pin but the problem is what if I want to zoom in to this sign or zoom out from the sign say I wanted to start fully zoomed into this sign and then zoom out the problem is because these are on two layers that's actually very difficult to do because I can select this clip underneath open up its motion tabs and scale it right up and then I need to select the other one and go in and scale that right up and try and get it matching and I might be able to do it but you know what it's going to be really difficult so I'm going to reset both of those and select the other one and I'm going to reset them with this item here and show you the better way of doing it what we need to do is make Premiere Pro treat these two items as a single piece of footage now there are a couple of ways of doing that one is I could create a new sequence and I could drag danger sign into the new sequence I can even take danger sign drag it to the new sequence icon or new items icon and create a new sequence that way which has got danger sign in it and as you'll see that is nested and it's got a good name danger sign there is one other way of doing it if I take original danger sign with the two items there I can select the top piece of footage and hold the shift key and select the bottom piece of footage so they're both selected right click on them 
and choose this option here that says nest and when you nest both of the items are brought together as a single item which in this case is called nested sequence 3. Now it's not added it you may notice to the sequence bin in fact if I go up you'll see that it's added it to the root of the bin so if I do want to use the nested sequence it's chucked in the root and I need to take that and drag and drop it into my sequence bin. So that's a couple of ways of doing it. I'll just run over them very briefly again. Control double click sequences. One is you can take the sequence with the two pieces of footage and drag them onto the new items icon. The only problem with that is, as you can probably see in my sequence bin here, I've got two sequences which are named exactly the same thing. But when I double click one, um, that's got the nested sequence in. When I double click the other, that's got the danger sign in. So you do need to rename them if you do this. If you take one and drag it down to the new items icon, make sure you rename the end result. Or alternatively, you could create a brand new sequence and drag it into that. But the easiest way by far is just selecting those two pieces of footage, as we did in this one, right clicking on them and choosing nest. And now they are one piece of footage. So when I click on them, I've got one set of motion controls. And if I open up the motion controls, I can now perform the pan and zoom into a single item which effectively has these two things locked together. So if I scale them right up and I play with the position properties, just moving them to the appropriate place so it starts in the middle of the screen. And then at the beginning of the sequence with my playhead at the beginning, I'm clicking the stopwatch for position and the stopwatch for scale because I say I want to animate those. And then after a few seconds, I want them both to go back to normal and to get them back to normal rather than resetting these position properties and scale properties just click this button here the reset button and it will take it back to its default settings click that it brings it back to the default settings and not only that it actually adds the keyframes in for me so if I go back to the beginning and I hit spacebar you'll see that we've got a sort of a pan and a zoom it's not really a pan although in actual fact it is panning we've moved position but it looks more like it's just a zoom now one other thing just to show you a slightly advanced feature if you go to your effects control panel and you sort of marquee select that means click and drag around these last two keyframes there is an advanced option if you right click on the keyframes now they're both selected I can see they're gold right click on them and you'll see right towards the bottom second from bottom there's temporal interpolation and I'm not going to explain all of these, but if you go down to this one that says Ease In, the keyframes will change. So they've changed to this hourglass look. And the difference is that there is now a smooth finish to these keyframes. So that when the timeline comes to this point, rather than a sudden very abrupt stop, it's going to be a lot smoother. So let's just try that. I'll play that again. You can see that that's much smoother. Now you can also do this incidentally to the beginning keyframes, select those and right click them, but rather than choosing Ease In, you actually choose Ease Out, you're leaving those keyframes, and that will give you a smooth out and a smooth in. And that just looks a little bit more professional, and if you're doing any of this kind of scaling and position work, do play around with the Ease In and the Easy Ease, these different options by right clicking on your keyframes so that you can actually get much better results that look far more professional. So you've learnt about the corner pin effect, you've learnt how to nest things, doing it in the timeline and different options, and we've even played with keyframes. In the next tutorial we're just going to have a very brief look at animating a little bit in the timeline itself.